first of all, let me maybe introduce myself a little bit. Like Katie said, I'm one of the Zedidas co-founders. You know, we started the company all the way back in 2016 uh, with you know three other friends of mine. And actually, uh, the first line of code for what later became Eve uh, came from my fellow co-founder Eric Nordmark uh, way back in 16 as well. So. If you measure, you know, Eve's lifespan uh, from the first time the first line of code appeared, it's actually a pretty old open source project, uh, project by now. I also used to hack at various companies. Actually, Eric and I used to be at Sun Microsystems together. Uh, then Yahoo, Cloudera, Pivotal. So I've been kind of like all around the valley, but also doing a lot of the open source. Uh, and today I actually ended up on the board of directors of Apache Software Foundation and actually used to be a VP of technology at Linux Foundation as well. So if you want to follow me, which I might warn you, you know, it's not just technology, but it's all sort of stuff that I talk about. You know, here's my Twitter handle and also LinkedIn profile. But enough about me. So today is all about Eve, and we will talk about this Eve, uh, which is Eve OS. Uh, it is, if you think about it, an open source operating system for the edge. So I keep joking that it is OS squared or OS OS. Uh, and it typically runs on edge devices. So something like this, right? You know, if you could see uh, me holding it up. Uh, so this is an edge device, and we also have a couple of examples of edge devices on this slide. So it's all of these computers around us. And if you think about it, we're kind of used about, you know, to, to have uh, huge data centers. We're used to having, uh, you know, gigantic clouds, you know, provided to us by public cloud infrastructure providers like Google, Amazon. But we don't actually think about how much compute power is all around us, right? You know, how much compute power is in a city, in a building that you're in, how much compute power is in your local Starbucks location or in your local McDonald's location, right? All of those places have these little computers. And these little computers nowadays, you know, they're not your embedded, you know, uh, sort of hardware of your. I mean, these are pretty capable machines. I mean, you're typically talking about, you know, a few gigabytes of RAM. You know, you're talking about, you know, maybe hundreds of gigabytes of flash. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with, with those, right? So all of those computers typically are called the edge. And before we uh, get to understand what Eve is all about, let's actually try to parse, you know, this sentence of an open source operating system for the edge. So let's start with the edge. What is the edge? Well, the good news is that edge is plentiful, right? You know, we have different kinds of edges, and that's actually what makes it kind of confusing because when people talk about uh, edge, you know, different people mean different things. If you ask, you know, five different technologists, you know, they will give you 10 different definitions of what edge is. So to try and deconfuse everybody, uh, here at Linux Foundation, we actually try to put together a white paper. Uh, called Edge Taxonomy. I actually highly recommend you all download it because it talks about you know, what could be uh, called Edge and what typically people mean when they say Edge. So if you think about it, I mean, Edge basically starts with really small constraint devices, right? You know, it's your sensor, you know, maybe your thermostat. You know, it's what used to be known as IoT, but I think you know, those two terms, IoT and Edge, are now sort of converging. So it's actually useful to talk about constraint device Edge as part of the Edge, right? Then on the very sort of high end, you essentially have you know, small data centers. Typically, they would be called regional edges, right? And it's something that a telco company might have, or maybe a company like, let's say, uh, Equinix, uh, or a company like Cloudflare, you know, basically localized deployments, localized installs of compute. But other than the fact that they are local, you know, they're sort of in a city or in a municipality, they actually look exactly like what you would see in a typical data center. And then there is everything in between. So if you think about Eve, Eve actually plays in this area, which is one step above constrained device edge, right? Uh, we call it smart device edge. So again, something like this, you know, this little computer would be a great example of a smart device edge. Uh, it typically would be a computer that is, you know, either a gateway or a small instance of compute, maybe it drives some industrial process. Uh, but it typically is attached to some physical element in the real world, right? And you need to control it, or maybe you need to get data and send it to the cloud. So that's what smart device edge is. And then there is on-prem data center edge, right? These are oh, Roman. Yes. Can I just can I just interrupt you? Did you want to be sharing slides while you're talking? Yes. Do you not see them? No, we haven't seen your screen share yet. Can you see the device at least on screen now? 
Yeah, yeah, we can see your video and we see your shared screen. Okay, awesome. So this is the device I was talking about. And again, like I was saying, uh, all of those devices are all around us. So here's the money slide, you know, with the uh, edge uh, taxonomy, right? You know, for everybody to have a visual cue. Um, and I will not rehash, you know, all of the things that I said, but just, you know, kind of jump straight into talking about what Eve targets. So Eve targets smart device edge and on-prem data center edge, right? Uh, so on-prem data center edge is interesting because again, it sort of looks a little bit more like a typical rackable compute, but it is just a few of those, right? So again, your local Target or your local Walmart typically would have, you know, on-prem data center edge in the back room uh, because it's a big, you know, IT deployment that they have to manage. You know, these days, if you walk into a store, you know, you need to manage uh, your Wi-Fi. You need to typically manage your camera. So there's a lot of things going on. You need to manage your employees, you know, tagging in and tagging out. So it, it is quite a bit of uh, in compute infrastructure, and that compute infrastructure is not in the cloud, right? It's local in that store itself. So Eve targets these two things, right? You know, smart device edge and on-prem data center edge. Uh, theoretically, Eve can be uh, available to you know regional edge and telco edge, and maybe someday we'll extend it all the way to constrained device edge. But for now, it's just these two boxes that we're targeting. So that is what Eve does, right? You know, that is where we play. Now let's talk about open source. So uh, Eve is an open source project. Like I said, I mean the first line of code was uh, written by uh, a co-founder of mine. Uh, Eric Nordmark, and at the time it wasn't really yet an open source project, so it didn't start its life as an open source project. Uh, but very quickly, pretty much immediately, uh, we started this new uh, thing within Linux Foundation. And for all of those uh, of you who don't know what Linux Foundation does, it's not just about Linux. Linux Foundation is actually home for a lot of different open source collaborative projects. And probably the most famous one is by now Cloud Native Compute Foundation, home for you know to Kubernetes. Uh, and if you think about it, what we did uh, with Eve and a couple of other companies bringing their own projects, we kind of created a sister organization called LF Edge. And the division of labor between the two is pretty simple. So Cloud Native Compute Foundation is taking care of anything and everything that needs to be uh, available in a data center to be you know, uh, uh, successful. And LF Edge is taking care of everything else, right? All of those computers outside of data centers, the software and the community is congregating in LF Edge. So LF Edge is an open source collaborative project within Linux Foundation, and Eve is part of it. So we're not alone uh, within LF Edge. You know, like I said, it wasn't just uh, Zdita uh, that brought its project in. You know, there were a few other companies, you know, pretty big companies too, like IBM and a few others. So by now we have about you know uh, ten projects within LF Edge, and that list is growing. You know, new projects are coming in, and it's a pretty exciting place to be. Uh, so even if not for Eve, just check out you know our sister projects, and if you want to keep uh, up to date with what's going on with Edge and you know how you can help and how you can contribute, LF Edge is one of the best places to get engaged. Uh, there are conferences that we're running, so just go and register and keep up with the news. Now let's deep dive a little bit more into Eve. So Eve again is a sub project of the LF Edge. Uh, just like any other open source project, we have the usual ways of you know interacting and collaborating with us. So there is the code on GitHub. You know there is documentation, mailing list. You know wiki. Uh, we're pretty heavy Slack users. So any of you who get you know curious today about what Eve is, I really really highly recommend you know stopping by on Slack and just you know saying hi to us. We're pretty friendly. Uh, Kathy is on Slack, you know, all the time. I try to be as much as possible, but uh, just to, you know, stop by, say hi, and you know, it's a nice place to be. Uh, if you want to contribute, if you are one of the open source developers, uh, Eve and all of its other sub projects are implemented in Go. Uh, we just run everything on GitHub. So again, there is uh, LF Edge, which is an organization name slash Eve slash Adam and slash Eden, and I will talk a little bit more about you know how these projects sort of come together. So just go on GitHub. You will see the usual you know, means of collaborating on GitHub. We accept pull requests. In fact, we love your pull requests, so send us a pull request. Uh, we're a pretty modern project in the sense that you know, everything that gets submitted to GitHub gets built and tested you know, through the use of GitHub Actions. Uh, so you will see that. And you know, gets published in Docker Hub uh, because 
Interestingly enough, even though we're building an operating system, we're actually using containers or container images, you know, to be specific, a great deal. Uh, so a lot of our workflows are essentially focused on uh, how do CI CD pipelines, you know, get from the code to containers, which actually means that we're not one of those old school operating systems, right? You know, if you get to play with us, you will see how a next generation sort of modern day and operating system can, could look like. Finally, uh, as I mentioned, there is Wiki, and I actually love our Wiki because we publish all of our technical uh, proposals. You know, anything that will get to be a new feature in Eve gets published as a technical proposal in our Wiki. But we also get to see all of the devices, again, like this one, you know, or maybe even bigger ones, you know, that people run Eve on. Uh, now, again, this is the list that we just maintain as a community, right? You know, this list doesn't mean that, you know, it is officially supported by anybody, although some of those are supported by commercial vendors like Zdida. Uh, but I just love this list because it's so long and, you know, it's kind of fun to see what people played with and, you know, what people put Eve on, right? And just to highlight a couple of uh, entries on that list, I mean, obviously we have these computers like the one I was showing you, but there are also virtual, you know, ways of running Eve. So you can actually run Eve on your laptop, you know, just using uh, VirtualBox or QAML. Uh, and in fact, you can actually run Eve on Google Compute Engine because Google Compute Engine is one of the few public cloud providers that support nested virtualization. And Eve is a very heavy virtualization user. So you kind of need to have that. Uh, so you can run Eve just about on anything, right? You know, Raspberry Pi, you know, cloud providers. Kathy later on will show you how to run it on uh, bare metal using uh, Pixie Boot. So in that sense, you know, Eve is a real bona fide operating system. So let's talk about the operating system. Why did we even bother creating a new operating system in 2016, right? You know, what was the uh, point for us to actually do that? Well, as a dear friend of mine, Brian Contrill, you know, keeps saying that, you know, there is absolutely no way uh, to listen to either of us without getting a lesson in computer science, at least, you know, one way or the other. So let's talk about, you know, what an operating system typically is. Well, an operating system typically is something that sits between the hardware and the runtime uh, and, you know, is effectively in the business of supporting the runtime and the application that runs on that runtime, right? So typically, you know, in a modern day, you know, you have this kind of pie of different things, right? And it just so happened that in the 90s especially, operating systems have become the focus and all of us who've been around, you know, long enough, remember the wars between the Unix and the Microsoft and, you know, all of these different types of operating systems, you know, try to rule the world. And it was kind of like the race to be the be all end all operating system to run everything. Now, honestly, looking back, I think the whole notion that an operating system is this, you know, uh, atlas, you know, holding the world together is kind of misguided because at the end of the day, we don't actually want our operating systems to be big. We don't want our operating systems to be all powerful. We just want enough of an operating system to basically support our favorite runtime, which kind of brings us to the ideal computer for 2021. And that ideal computer, uh, looks kind of like that. We have, you know, a hardware that is typically nowadays either x86, ARM, and RISC V. Uh, we don't actually have that many hardware variants left. I mean, we're kind of like down to three at this point. We typically have some kind of a POSIX-ish operating system, right? And on top of that, we have a container orchestration system. Uh, and then the application gets to be expressed as containers. You know, everybody's happy. In fact, there is a whole bunch of vendors who have built products uh, in the space to effectively do what I just showed you on the left, right? You know, we have public cloud providers, we have, you know, private data center providers with VMware, Tanzu product. All of them kind of do what I'm just showing you, right? Now, there's actually a, even an interesting full stack uh, company now called Oxide Computers that does, you know, this ideal computer for 2021 in a form of a rack. So you can actually buy a rack from them that gives you, you know, effectively container orchestration uh, APIs, you know, on top of it, no questions asked, right? You don't even know like what's what's inside. I mean, you could know because most of it is open source. Uh, but the point being is that you buy a rack to basically run containers, which is kind of cool. Now, what would be an ideal computer for edge computing, right? You know, what would an ideal edge computer for 2021 look like? Because again, we're not dealing with racks, right? You know, we're dealing with little th these little things. So I still believe that, you know, on top, you will have 
container orchestration, but I also believe that you know it is very important to have VM virtual machine orchestration as well. Now, when it comes to the operating system, it just needs to be enough of an operating system. And you know, some people even call it a glorified device driver, right? You know, which is sort of true because again, there is a lot of IO, there is a lot of devices in uh, in, in in something like this, right? Uh, it's not just obviously, you know, uh, just device drivers because the operating system also needs to take care of things like connectivity and networking and basically take care of essentially all of the uh, devices, but in a nice API driven way, right? So think of it as, you know, let's say what Android has done to the mobile computing, right? You know, with Android nowadays, I don't have to worry about what device driver do I need for my, you know, LTE modem or for my camera. My application simply makes a request, you know, to the operating system, take a picture or make a phone call, and it just sort of happens, right? That is kind of the APIs we need from the operating system. We don't need it to be all powerful. We just need it to be enough to support containers and uh, VM on top of it. Now, in terms of the hardware, it's sort of the same deal. We only really have to care about x86, ARM, and RISC-V. And all of those hardware platforms uh, EVE actually runs on today. So we have the full coverage. RISC-V is a little bit still experimental. So if you're curious about RISC-V, now is actually a good time to engage with us and help us you know, build out uh, RISC-V support in EVE you know, in, in its full glory. Uh, but this is what we actually looked at back in 2016 when we had to build a new operating system. Like, how can we build just enough of it? And this is what came out. This is basically the EVE architecture. So uh, let me just walk you through this. So at the bottom, we kind of have IoT Edge, you know, compute hardware, right? And again, could be a small box, could be a bigger box. We're definitely not really interested in running in a standard data center setting because uh, our strength lies in uh, things that are really edge specific. Again, like intermittent connectivity uh, and you know a lot of I/O that just doesn't happen in the data center, right? In the data center, your only I/O is typically networking, uh, but we have to deal with specialized networks, you know, radio technology like you know Zigbee and LoRa. We have to deal with industrial ones like you know CAN bus and Modbus, and it actually kind of makes it exciting, but also not really applicable to a data center. Um, so it is IoT edge compute hardware, and on top of that, uh, we have a full-fledged you know operating system that actually boots. So you know when your BIOS is done, you know let's say you're running UEFI, when your BIOS is done, you know Eve is the piece of software that runs next. Uh, Eve itself is uh, managed on disk in terms of the partition A and partition B. So we have a scheme that is very similar to Android or you know, Chrome OS. In fact, some of the code uh, that we leveraged actually comes from Chrome OS. So we're very grateful for the uh, community uh, in Chrome you know, to sort of provide it to us. And the size of Eve itself is actually tiny. Compared you know, to even embedded operating systems, it's pretty small. The single image of Eve only takes 250 megabytes. Uh, but because we have to run two partitions, you know, to basically do the updates, you know, uh, securely, uh, that goes up to 500 megabytes because it doubles. Uh, but it's still pretty small, even compared to, you know, most of the uh, operating systems today. Uh, then, you know, on top of that, we kind of have a hypervisor. So Eve, uh, like I said, you know, needs to support virtual machines. So we're leveraging hardware-assisted virtualization, uh, and typically, you know, most of our customers run KVM. But we do have support for Zen and you know some experimental support for Acorn. Acorn is this Intel's you know uh, highly experimental hypervisor for mixed criticality workloads. And then on top of the hypervisor, we basically have a whole bunch of services, Eve services that are running uh, in the control domain. Now we actually have experimental you know uh, attempts to disaggregate all of those services and sort of the Cubes OS style run them in separate domains. That hasn't really happened yet. I mean, we had a demo, but you know that didn't go much further than that. Uh, all of that together basically takes an overhead of about 500 megabytes of RAM and about you know, one CPU core, which means if you have a device that is smaller than you know, 500 megabytes of RAM, uh, doesn't have you know, disk that is larger than let's say one gigabyte, and you know, has a single core CPU, then you know, Eve is probably not for you. But typically these days, even in ARM, you know, even in Raspberry Pi, it's actually very difficult to get a device that is just a single core, right? You know, most of the time you're talking at least a couple of cores. You know, typically what we see in the market is four cores, right? 
Now, those are Eve services, and there is one Eve service that talks to the controller. And then, you know, through the controller APIs, we basically get to receive uh, requests, you know, for all of the useful stuff that Eve will do for you, you know, from the container orchestration and VM orchestration standpoint. So typically, Eve would run one VM, you know, some kind of a legacy application, most of the time Windows based, and would run, you know, some greenfield container management system like K3, uh, K3S. Uh, and, you know, that will have its own control plane, typically connecting to a rancher. Uh, so that's the overall, you know, out, outline of the operating system. That is what EVE is, and we just need to build enough software to support it. Uh, a couple of uh, points about the controller. So EVE by itself just sits there, you know, waiting for the instructions from the controller. Zdita obviously has its own commercial controller. That is what Katie was talking about when she announced our developer program. If you're curious to play with it, you can actually get an invite and kind of experience the full power of the commercial controller. That piece of software is all closed source and proprietary. But the good news is that we actually have a rudimentary controller uh, called Adam. And that was the other project on GitHub I was showing you. And there is the overall environment for managing Adam and Eve, you know, called Eden, uh, with its own CLI and, you know, sort of its own uh, way of how how you can sort of arrange things. Now, again, the commercial controller is great if you have a fleet of devices of, you know, let's say 25 plus. Uh, open source controller lets you play with, you know, just your single Raspberry Pi. You know, that's fine. But if you want scalability and if you want, you know, higher number of devices, you probably would be better off, you know, using a commercial controller. Now, are we against people in the open source community uh, taking Atom and building it into a full-fledged you know, commercial control? Absolutely not. We would love for that to happen. And in fact, we're contributing ourselves a little bit. Uh, but obviously, our company's focus is on the commercial controller. But if anybody you know, is listening right now, especially from the big cloud providers like, hey, Amazon, hey, Google, hey, Microsoft, if you guys you know, pick Atom and build it into a cloud capability or just, you know, just a much better open source controller, we would love for that to happen. For now, again, like I said, it's pretty rudimentary, but it's enough to manage your Raspberry Pi. And that's it. That's all I have for Eve. So join us. Uh, talk to us on Slack. You know, send us pull requests. It's a real nice open source community. Uh, and the best way to engage is to just get it going. I mean, honestly, people keep asking me, like, how do you actually start in the open source? And I always tell them, you just do. Like, you just find that first pull request and it could be a very small one it could be you know a little bit of documentation that you fix or maybe a test case or you know maybe a build system right you know it doesn't have to be small it doesn't have to be rocket science just send us your first pull request you know get engaged and it could be a real fun building next generation operating system